Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. This is another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. And before we get into uh, discussing the full-blown details of Satya, uh, we have a special guest that has actually created a song for us. So for those of you that are familiar with the Dysopia channel from DFFOO, I would like to present to you the Dysopian Bard. Yo, Diggs, you uh, you wanted to introduce the new warrior, the crystal, right? Well, don't worry, man. I got you. Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful day out here in the Atlantic Northeast. I'm the Dysopia Bard, and I'm here to ruin, I, I mean, introduce the new warrior of the crystal. Sedia's a fiery thing in her bow, so it's firing. Give you a pull in desire. Cassetia is the warrior of fire. Cassetia is the warrior of fire. She'll strike the match on your funeral pyre. It'll burn, burn, burn. Warrior of fire. Warrior of fire. Pretty cool, right? By the way, I made it through that entire thing without making any jokes about it burning when you pee. I mean, that's impressive, right? No? Oh, crap. I'm just gonna give it back to Diggs. I'm the reason we can't have nice things. Thank you so much to the Dysopian Bard for collaborating. That was a lot of fun. He reached out to me and I wasn't sure what, we, what to expect and I'm glad we got something fun and exciting. Let's though talk about Satya and talk about the burning hole that she's going to leave in our wallets and whether or not she's going to be worth it. Uh, her main job is going to be Crystal Warrior. She is going to have sub job Viking and Sniper. And one of the first things I think about, especially in PvE content, she is going to have access to Launch, which is a slash fire element attack. So she will be able to chain fire slash for any potential raids coming out in the future. That's kind of my first thought when I see sub Viking is I'm like, okay, uh, she's going to be pretty powerful in some PvE content here. Uh, she's going to have access to her TMR, which that wise is not the best, uh, but it gives active fire, which is a AOE uh, 25 missile attack for allies, and it's a restore 20 AP for self, which is okay. Um, if you're buffing your party, if you're buffing your allies, this is an okay way to go. The problem, though, is if you're not popping bells on the first turn, if you're not popping... Uh, I'm not sure if she can equip Lucio's TMR, but if you're not popping Lucio's TMR on the first turn, because she's a ranged base character, she's going to be in range of the opponents. So you usually, woo, you usually need to pop, you know, one buff. It's very difficult for ranger classes to pop two different buffs. So uh, not the most exciting buff here, uh, but, you know, maybe you can put it on a secondary unit or a unit with far less range. Um, that maybe has access to missile attacks like Garvel, for example, although that would be really weird, but maybe. <laughs> uh, mastery ability increase HP 10%, fire attack 15 for fire allies. Uh, defense penetration 20 is going to be really nice, and an additional magic resistance 10% will also be good on top of that. In terms of her kit, uh, no accuracy. I know a lot of people are really paying attention to accuracy right now and they're like narrowed in on it uh but no accuracy in her kit uh dexterity 329 is higher than jaden's so she is going to have a little bit higher base accuracy than jaden uh but no accuracy buffs so to say uh which is a big drawback in a world where we are kind of facing an evasion meta in pvp uh, we were testing her hit rate or her theoretical hit rate uh, last night on stream. Uh, for those of you that were actually there, uh, we were testing a maxed out Elena versus uh, theoretically what Satya's decks would be. And she was having, once Elena had buffed, about a 65% hit rate, which is not terrible uh, against Elena, but it's also something to be aware of. Uh, some things you might be able to do to circumvent that would be like put Rune Bow on or maybe put, you know, 
a accuracy based esper on um but just something to keep in mind if you are planning on getting her for the pvp kind of arena perspective now she does have five percent slash resistance she's weak five percent to pierce weak five percent to striking uh 20 percent to magic resistance is going to be really nice um you know it comes in total to 30 percent magic resistance which will be you know a little chonky in terms of the resistances uh she also has some sleep resistance so she has 50 percent sleep resistance uh which will do her very well i think uh particularly oh my god i can't stop yawning in this video uh <laughs> <laughs> particularly particularly with um you know uh more the more the merrier uh having access to some sleep abilities uh having sleep resistance is going to be nice so uh take a look at her support kit unfortunately no accuracy like i was saying she does get that doesn't mean she doesn't have good passives uh she has um her kind of main primary passive the fiery archer uh agility 12 percent missile resistance penetration 40 decrease ap consumption 25 for self that is extremely powerful you're going to be setting that and then you have you know different options you have sniper secrets for attack missile attack 15 luck plus 12 percent uh you also have potentially you could set like hp or attack up or you could give range plus two or range plus one uh so she's definitely very versatile in that regard uh but again no like accuracy plus 30. uh but you do get a little bit of accuracy from agility though uh and luck so potentially you know she will have a little bit higher than 65 percent hit rate uh really depending on how you build her but uh keep that in mind just as we are going through this i think for pve wise she's going to be incredible uh, i'm really excited for her in pve uh, she does have access to reflex which will be i mean reflex just it, it wins matches right like there <laughs> reflex just reflex just wins matches for you no matter what it saves your ass like reflex is god tier um she does have in her main kit 121 percent modifier decreased attack 39 percent uh her buff gives slash resistance 20 percent and magic resistance 20 percent now keep in mind she has that 30 percent base magic resistance so she is going to quite easily be able to get to 50 percent magic resistance uh which will make her very powerful against mages uh we also have in here her upgraded heat sealed radiation which will 100 seal counter this is her barrage like ability uh 165x modifier and it decreases healing power uh so going to be really good for clipping and hitting multiple enemies uh binders bow now this is important uh this dispels auto revive and it can be really easy to miss this in her kit if you're just perusing it it also has a chance to inflict stun which does land quite regularly on opponents so dispelling auto revive landing stun 175 percent modifier this is going to be a ability that uh you should be very excited to use uh she does have another buff which gives single target resistance 15 for three turns to allies it also gives agility 25 percent for three turns for self i think you'll probably use this over the protection of fire uh but again these defensive utilities are very powerful and that agility 25 percent is not to be underestimated uh, finally, her job level 25 ability, Breaking Bow, is going to be decreases defense 25 for three turns, and it's 165x modifier. Now, a little, little, you know, unfortunate about this ability is it does decrease defense 25. And this is one of those situations, again, where we have a unit where people are like, oh, you can stack defense penetration on her, right? Because uh, she has 20 defense penetration naturally in her kit. She can get platinum bow for 20 defense penetration. She can also um, use her sub sniper ability, which we'll talk about here, which gives defense penetration 40. Uh, so on top of that, she has missile resistance, 40% penetration as well in her support kit. But then you're lowering the defense of your opponent. And <laughs> which is basically like, unless they are a really hard tank right your opponent's probably not going to have more than 25 30 defense so not only is the defense lowering only 25 it should be more than 25. uh <laughs> it it also kind of works against her actual kit 
for the defense penetration, which I always find weird because I feel like they always give the defense lowering abilities to units that are able to achieve really high defense penetration and it's AoE. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're building her. Um, if you're planning on having her use that ability, you know, just consider consider whether you need the full amount of defense penetration that you may be planning because uh, you might not unless you're planning on going up against like an Engelbert or something else. You'll also notice the defense down hits first. Uh, so it's defense down 25 at the start of the attack and then it deals damage. So, I mean, again, if this is the ability she's going to be using, you know, for a lot of units, that's going to nullify the defense penetration that you do put on her. Uh, her sub kit does give a 25% chance to inflict Berserk for three turns. Not bad. Um, she also gets Paralyzing Arrow. Uh, I, I wonder if we're in a world where we might actually see Berserk getting used. Uh, where it's one of those status ailments that people very rarely have resistance to. I could see a like Max Faith Satya build just dr like driving people bonkers. But again, I don't know if her AI is going to be smart enough to do this. And this is one of those things we're going to have to test and work out. But between landing stun, between landing berserk, uh, these are all things that are pretty powerful. Uh, sub Viking, again, sub Viking is going to be really for PvE, like I talked about. It's only going to be used for launch or drain cyclone uh, when you're in a PvE environment. Uh, drain cyclone, actually really nice for her to have if you are like maybe trying to do solo content of some type. Uh, sub sniper, sub sniper is probably gonna be your bread and butter sub job. Uh, it does give range one as a buff and defense penetration 40. So again, you're choosing your buffs, right? She's a ranged unit. She's not gonna be able to do multiple buffs usually in a turn if you're in arena or gbg or anything like that uh so this may be the buff that you wanted to use increased range increased defense pen gonna be really good maybe you're not focused on lowering your opponent's defense maybe you're just focused on killing engelberts uh which is fine uh, it also has access to slow shot which will decrease the agility 20 percent uh, it has access to arm shoot which will give disable uh, and it also has a uh, break physical barrier for targets so uh, having Barrier Break Arrow is a very powerful ability if you are going up against these tanky boys. Uh, finally, her LB is a 38% chance to uh, lower, sorry, it lowers fire resistance 38%, 200% modifier. Uh, it is in a cross-shaped attack and it has about, you know, three or four range. Uh, very good, uh, very powerful. Uh, I wonder if she's going to prioritize that over some of her other abilities. Very powerful for PvE, but also we have so many other units that can lower fire resistance in PvE. If you're putting together a fire slash chaining party, you're really not going to be able to offer anything except for defense down potentially because, I mean, we have rain that can lower fire resistance and he is pretty much generally accessible to everybody. Uh, and I think his fire resistance is, you know, you're going to be using it because his LB is a multi-hit ability. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't see her LB being anything remarkable. Um, in terms of weapons, Platinum Bow is probably going to be people's primary choice, I would imagine, for the defense penetration. Uh, it also has higher base attack at 188. A lot of people... Uh, are going to look at her bow, which gives HP 15% for three turns at the start of battle, and just be like, what? Uh, the missile attack 15 for self. The aim version only gives 18 accuracy, 111 attack. Uh, the assault gives 159 attack. So again, platinum bow has higher attack and it has the defense pen. But again, I mean, if you're lowering your opponent's defense, defense penetration, unless they have over 25 defense, you know, they're going to need like 35, 45 defense for your defense penetration to even do anything if you're lowering their defense. So uh, consider that. Uh, then you also have Rune Bow to think about, um, which does have an aim version, which gives accuracy plus 28. Uh, in a world where, you know, being able to hit your opponent is very important, uh, I could see a lot of people making the case for you know, going for the aim version of Rune Bow, get that missile attack plus 15 and uh, bypassing that defense pen, right? Because you wanna actually prioritize being able to hit your opponent. Uh, anyway, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. I'm gonna go celebrate Giant's birthday with him. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun today. Uh, and I hope you guys are looking forward to Lost Ark coming out tomorrow. Uh, I'll catch you guys later and have a good rest of your day.